going to start recording. Um, so just so I know who, um, uh, what type of thing I need to focus on, could you guys just raise your hand or just say it in the chat if you, um, if you already used uh, the old interface and you need some guidance into how to use the new interface. And if you can also say if you're, um, if you're already currently using quick mail or thinking about it, or you're on trial, you're on pro, or you're on basics, that'd be awesome. Nice, Anna, you're using Toot. Thanks for checking quick mail. We got lots of Toot X Toot users. Oh yeah, nice. We got Kevin on a pro plan. He's been um, he's been using the new interface. Uh, Torban, two tap as well. Glad to have you here. Um, Gerish thinking about it. That's cool, guys. Kevin say we use two tap. It's nowhere near as good as quick mail. I think they all have their sort of um, usage. Um, but definitely, if you're trying to reach out people, I think we'll go through it anyway. What's quick mail is for, what it's not. Oh, nice one. Girish, we got, we got a big chunk on how to do the copywriting, the best practices I've seen, along with some examples. Uh, I was pretty sick today, so I couldn't actually do all the examples I wanted, but I think we got plenty of them. And at the end, we got like a super bonus style. I say that during the, um, during the agenda. Okay, Hort, you'll be using it. Yeah, I remember, I know that. Uh, you're one of the, the guy who took the yearly. Oh, Glenda, yes, of course you use the old system. You're, you're, very, um, you're here from the very early stage. So hopefully that should be a good refresher. Dan, you want me to talk about the affiliate program? I don't have any yet. So that will be fast to talk about. But there will be like a Q&A session as well. So let me just um, try to to start um, to start this thing. So here's the agenda for today. Uh, I'm just to briefly explain um, how quick mail, you know, have a quick look at quick mail, how it was born, what it's for, and what it's not. And I'm also going to cover some of the best practices inspired by the best performing users, but not only, as we'll see. Um, then we'll also talk about some advanced tactics that you may want to use. Uh, I recommend them because they usually provide a better response rate. And we'll go into Q&A. And um, then we'll have a super bonus for people who stay um, until the end. And the bonus will be in two parts. One will be for quick mail and one for helping you to follow up once quick mail a job is done. So hopefully that should be pretty cool, guys and girls. All right, so um, quick 60 seconds on how QuickMail was born. So I was joining the uh, foundation last year, which is a community of entrepreneurs. And I only had uh, two hours per day to try to reach out to people, schedule appointments, and have conversation with them. Uh, I was having like a full-time job at that time, and my time was really limited. And I didn't want to spend all my time to just um, send emails, basically, and then especially following up with people who didn't respond. So uh, I tried a lot of different tools, and at some point I was uh, so frustrated that I decided to do it for myself. And as I was, as more of my more of my peers were having exp uh, expressing the same problem, then I actually gave them access to that. And that's pretty much how QuickMail was born, out of the need for, um, for reaching out uh, by email to a lot of people and following up relentlessly. So if we, if we say, okay, what, what is QuickMail for? So QuickMail space in, is in a one-to-many. Uh, when you actually need volume and automation volume, then it becomes like unbearable with uh, typical tools that deals with one-to-one, -one, like follow-up CC or, or Boomerang or those sort of tools. Um, it also deals very well with the status of people, so we didn't need to... For, I was using Streak at that time, and it was really painful to sort of change the state every time someone responded to me from one state to another. And, but, but really what QuickMail is for is to get you replies. Um, it follow-ups and take people out of, 
of the sequence if they respond. I mean, if you get a sequence, if you get a response or reply by email, I mean, quick mail's job is done. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that a bit, uh, a bit later as well. And most of it, it needs to be personal. So it needs to be sent like if I was sending it. Um, because if I wanted to have the, most, the, the best response rate, I needed to follow up and look personal. Um, it has to have a Google account. Most of you probably already know that. Uh, some of my users create new ones. So some of my users are on Outlook, um, Microsoft Exchange, uh, Office 365, uh, or 360, I can't recall what it is, um, the cloud version of Outlook. And basically, people just create new account in Gmail just to be able to, uh, to use that. Or some of them just to uh, be able to ramp up with a lot of emails, they create their own sort of domain name uh, that is similar to the application. So if you have application.com, uh, for example, it will be like application-contact.com or something like that. And then they will use Google Apps. You guys should stop me as soon as you got a question. So what it's not, um, so initially it was difficult to explain what it was and what it wasn't, um, but very clear, it became very clear that it's not a CRM system. So as I mentioned, that as soon as you get a response uh, on quick mail, then the job is done. It's over, and you have to sort of find a system uh, to carry on your, your sort of one-to-one -one conversation with someone respond. So a lot of people use uh, those one-to-one -one tools I mentioned, like follow-up CC or Boomerang, and... Um, and some people use the Zapier integration uh, in QuickMail. About 10% of people use the Zapier integration in QuickMail to, to make that whenever someone responds, then it appears into their, their CRM system. And it's definitely not a tool to spam. Uh, actually, if you try to spam, then you realize that your response rate will be really, really low, really, really bad. And um, that's not the goal of QuickMail. I think I got one spammer on quick mail and he seems to be happy and doing really well, but I don't think this is the right tool for doing that. So, Okay, so um, I think, any, any questions so far? Are you guys okay? Just mention it into the chat if you're good and I can carry on. Because now it's going to be interesting. I'm going, oh, so everyone's good. So now it's going to be interesting. I'm going to uh, do you um, a quick demo starting from scratch. Uh, I'm going to play the role of a small marketing agency using QuickMail for the first time. And to be honest, as I was doing it, then it's pretty much the same for a small founding company, be it in SaaS or other things. I got people selling T-shirts. Um, I got, uh, obviously, my own system. I use my own system. And uh, I got quite a few marketing agencies, SEO agencies, and um, so this is basically the type of um, audience I have. Could you guys just um, quickly shot in a, shoot in the, um, in the hip chat what, um, what's your business? What are you guys are in? I know about you in consultancy. Glenda, did you actually change markets? Online auction for sushi, awesome. I remember, Glenda, you were going for um, um, school establishments or something like that. Am I right? Girish has a B2B SaaS product, awesome. Website redesign and social media marketing, so it should be good. Uh, B2B SaaS. Okay, seems like the right audience. So, um, let's go ahead and then let's start in quick mail. And Dan is part of a local uh, digital marketing agency. Well, perfect. You could even help me with the, uh, the script I'm going to build. So, um, this is quick mail on the new interface. And what I want to do is basically reach out for... Tonight, I'm just going to set up a system where I want to reach out for bloggers. I want bloggers in San Francisco. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a new group. I would say, I would say San Francisco blogs. No one from San Francisco here. Uh, that's too bad. I should have to pick an, another town. Actually, let's do it. So I can click on the name and then put New York one. 
I'm going to choose a nice color for New York. Let's say that's a nice, nice blue. We'll come to that then. Um, the question is, can I use Zapier to automatically bring people in quick now? No, that's not possible yet. Uh, that's one of the next strategy I want to, to move to. We have Zapier for um, getting things out of quick mail into something else, but we don't have currently getting things into quick mail. That's one of my next um, priority, actually. Um, okay, so I got my New York blogs. I'm happy there is actually no prospect into it. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to import things. For that, I go to the prospect tab, and then here you got the import button. I'm going to click on that one, and you can either do an S, a CSV file, uh, here with some example of how to format it, or I can go directly to my Google Drive. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select a spreadsheet that I've got here, blogs in San Francisco, and I can click here to view it. So I'm going to do that. All right, so these are the people that I want. There is a first name, last name, email, company. Make sure email is one word when you're um, importing, otherwise nothing will be found. Um, company, website, address, phone, those are the normal system uh, fields. You can add more, more fields to, uh, to your, um, you can add more fields to your spreadsheets, like, um, financials, for example, and you can have a lot of data into it, and those data will not be imported into QuickMail unless you request it, which basically means it's really safe to use this with an existing spreadsheet from marketing or from something else. The way you include the financials things is to use the custom attributes. So we'll cover that a bit later when we're going to discuss some advanced feature, but for now I'm just going to use a normal thing uh, blogs in San Francisco, I'm going to select in what group I want them in. If I had them already here in my, uh, in my list of prospects, I will need to click this box to sort of auto-update uh, existing prospect, otherwise it will be skipped. So I'm importing things, uh, you can see some jobs going on, and it started importing, and the import is already done. So that's pretty cool, let me try to refresh. And voila, we got everyone importing to quick mail. Any questions so far? Are we all good on the import? Okay, Glenda's good. So let's carry on. You can edit someone by either clicking on the view thing, or if you want a quick edit, you can simply click on the name. So I can do Sherman2, for example, and then click Save. So that's an easy and quick way. All right, question from Van. If I add prospects in the Google Doc, are they automatically getting into quick mail? No, not quite. You still need to go back and click again on the import from Google Drive, and then redo the process. And this time, if you want to uh, change the existing one, so Sherman will come back, Sherman 2 will come back to Sherman, you need to take this. If I don't take this, then Sherman won't, will not be touched because this email already exists. They will be, um, as part of the old interface, that's one of the last thing I need to bring to the new interface, is the ability uh, in pro version to specify, hey, I want my, uh, my spreadsheet to be imported on, a, on an hourly basis. And then, basically, that will allow you to add new prospects at the end. So let's say I add 10 new prospects. You can add more prospects here. Something. And then it will automatically pick it up on an hourly basis. But for that, you need Pro, and it's almost done. Uh, I need to put it into automation yet. So come back in one month, and it will be done. Um, Okay, um, Gary had a question. Can I use multiple email addresses with one account of QuickMail? Um, you mean as a prospect? Can a prospect have multiple address, or can you personally impersonate with multiple uh, email address? The second question, I'm going to cover that a bit later.
So to email people, you can only have one email. So in this case, this is shaman uh, winer at madeinaker.com. But you can add custom attributes, as we are going to see that later, where you can actually add more emails. But the one you will be emailing is this one. But let me, let me ask you a question. Why do you actually want to add multiple emails? Is it because people respond from different emails? Or is it, what, what is the reasoning behind it? And while I'm waiting for, uh, for Girish to, to put his, um, his answer, I'm just going to carry on a little bit. Uh, Dan, you mentioned you have three salespeople. You probably need three accounts. You, uh, Girish, you missed the question. So the question is, why do you need multiple emails? And what type of emails are there? Is that multiple emails on one prospect? Or is that you using multiple emails? Yes, so we could either take it offline or I can, if you have a microphone, I'd be happy to sort of unmute you at the Q&A session. So I'm just going to move on so people don't lose the trail here. So now I got my 40 prospects and I got one group. Uh, you can add obviously as many groups as you want. So you could do SF blogs, or San Francisco blogs and things like that. But for now, we'll just keep with one group. The next thing I want to do is to build a campaign. So for the campaign, I'm going to imagine um, a sort of competition I'm going to use to market bloggers. So let me just do New York, New York competition, let's say 2014. And my subject will be something along the line of something for your readers, question mark. Here we go. So this is my first campaign. At the moment, there is no email into it. It's just basically a shell. I'm going to click to view it. Oh, and by the way, before I do that, sorry about that. You can just basically click here and fix any typo. Um, something. And you can also change the color. So let me put another blue one here. So color will come for automation. We'll see that very soon. So if I click on view and start looking at my campaign, there's new, multiple tabs. The one you're all interested in right now as we are building the campaign is a sequence tab. A sequence is where you can add a series of touch emails that will be sent to a prospect. So let me just create a new one. I'm going to create two emails. I'm going to leave the subject open because I'm happy with the subject. Uh, we'll cover the new thread into the advanced feature. But for now, what I want to do is to copy a simple, um, obviously, if I copy right, that will be help, more helpful. I'm going to copy a simple uh, email. Who says, um, hey, first name, I'm Jeremy, founder of Supermassive Buzz, a marketing agency located in New York. I found your detail on your website. Uh, we'd like to propose something for your, to your readers. I hope you won't mind me reaching out like that. As part of the 20th, blah, blah, blah. Are you the right person to speak about those events? And I'm pretty happy. This is my first email touch. I'm going to save that. And I want to create a reminder as well. So I want to make sure that, you know, I don't leave anything to chance, and I want to remind them I've sent them an email in the past. So I'm going to paste another one. That, are super, that is super short. I just say, hey, first name, just wanted to make sure this email video didn't fall through the cracks. If you're wondering what type of macro you could use, you can click on the little icon here, show, and I will show you what type of uh, fields you can use. And by the way, they, these are the same fields that you had into the uh, spreadsheet. Those ones are specific. We can see them later, either in the Q&A or in the advanced um, session. And, and then you keep on building things like that. Here you notice that I got three business days in between two touches. So if I send one on Friday, 
The reminder of the follow-up will only be sent on Tuesday. If I want something shorter, I can edit and actually put only two business days. There you go. And we'll come to best practices as well very soon. So I have my first, um, I have my first sequence I'm happy with. This is my campaign. But I want to test it. So there is an easy way to test it is you go to prospects and you find a prospect that has not been emailed yet. Let's say Stanton seems like a good one. So I'm going to click on view Stanton and I'm going to go on campaign. Here I can either start a campaign on Stanton. I can click here and I will send it straight away to him. And I come back to this question, uh, Garish. Um, and then the second one is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to use a test, test emails. So I'm going to click that and let the system work while I answer Garish's question. So um, how can we make sure that the follow-up goes on weekday, not weekends? It's automatic. At the moment, you can't send on weekends follow-ups. You can still send initial uh, emails on weekend, but not follow-ups yet. And follow-ups are done automatically for you. All right, seems like my job completed. It sends my email. Let's have a look at my mailbox. Uh, this is my import, actually. I imported a prospect a bit earlier. I can click on that and see the result. So the process was completed. I added 40 prospects. And that's pretty much it. So I'm happy with that. All right, as I refresh, I can see the two, um, the two test emails I sent myself. Here's the first one. Hey, Stanton. So the first, first, um, first name works pretty well. I'm Jeremy from the Supermassive Buzz, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I noticed a typo. No sweat. I go back to my campaign. I click View. I click Sequence. I click First Touch, Edit, and I change this here. So see that's useful to send yourself some test emails. Do I plan in addition the option to use shortcuts in the from fields also? Uh, not in the from field. You can change the you can change the subject. You can use first name in subject or any sort of tag except uh, days. I think days doesn't work in in subject. But all the other tags, including your custom attribute, will work in the subject. Let me cancel that. I don't want to change that. So my New York is fixed. Let's see the second email that I will receive two days later if, um, if I haven't responded. So here is the second email. As you can see, it says, hey, Tom, Tom, just wanted to make sure this email below didn't fall through cracks. And then you have the email below, which is your first touch. So you can build like that as many touches as you want. All right, so let's say I'm ready for that now. I got two choices. Either I can do it manually, I can start email manually. In this case, I will click on campaign again. And I will select how many prospects I want to send manually. Let's say I want to, to try with 10 prospects. So I click on 10 here. And I select where my prospect should come from. In this case, it's my New York blog. I can click here, and I should send automatically some emails. I will actually click on one, so we'll send one. Actually, it's uh, five. Let's go for five. Let's be crazy. So here we go, starting sending, sending emails currently. And once the job is finished, which you can visualize here with a code running, there you go. It's done and completed. So let me see my prospect, and I see the state has been updated. All right, so if I see prospects, that's cool. I can see five people are currently on my New York competition campaign, and they're all on the first touch email. So it's pretty good. I could basically, um, let me try to see this Lara person. Let me try to go to mailinator.com. Uh, I'm going to open that into another space. Screen. I'm going to check for this person here. 
that we supposedly sent an email to. Um, Garish, um, Garish, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your first name. Um, you can't currently have prospect on two campaigns. This is what I call multi-conversation, and that's the feature that will be done in 2015. If you want to restart a different campaign on one person, you'll need to reset it. Uh, we can see that very soon. So let me, let me pretend I'm, I'm this person, and I'm opening my mailbox. Of course, if I go back to quick mail, I can see the live notification here for pro accounts. So you can see that this person actually opened it. It's a New York blog. And, and if you respond, then you, it will be tagged as responded. Now, the interesting thing um, is that if I send it to this person and this person respond under a different email, that will still work. This person will still be tagged as responded. So that takes you out of all the burden of um, um, an assistant responding or someone responding on his personal email. And you, can, you don't have to go ahead and then cancel the reminder. If I wanted to cancel a reminder, I would click on view on the prospect. I will go to campaign and then see when the next reminder is. So for me, it's two days. Um, we're on Thursday, so it'll be Friday, Monday. So effectively, this is Monday at this time is the next reminder. It globally four days because the weekend is here. I can cancel the follow-up. Let's say for some reason this person phoned me. Then it will make sense to go ahead and cancel the follow-up. You can see what the next email they will receive on Monday. It's here. And if you wanted this person to sort of stop this campaign and start a new campaign on this person, you will go to Events, and then we click Reset Prospect. So you click twice, once to confirm, and then the second time to go ahead. That will put them back into a not email state, and you can put them back into, into uh, a campaign. So one thing you can do, for example, is with the Advanced Filter, you can go to Advanced Filter, you can say, Give me everyone that is running on New York City competition and who is currently in responded. We don't have any responded, so nothing will pop up, but I can say email, for example. Email of responded. You select them all, and then here you can say reset or assign to a different group. Maybe my, you know, my second group or already, already emailed group kind of thing. So you can still get around it. It's not the nicest way. And one of the reasons for that is a quick mail job is to get you one to get you a reply from that person. After that, you have the relationship with that person, and you should be able to contact them differently or communicate with them differently. Anyway, nonetheless, this is possible, just not the best tool for doing that. All right, so I got my campaign. I'm happy with that. I send it manually, but I, what I really want is that emails a certain so a certain number of emails to be sent on a regular basis. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to go to the automation tab, and I want that um, every Wednesday at let's say at 9 a.m. I want 10 prospects from the New York um, blogs and start this email. And you can do that with as many days. You don't have to do them all, so you can do Friday or, or Thursday, depending what you what you like. You can try different time. You can say 1 p.m., 1.30 p.m. You want to take five here. And again, you can change things like that. And if you want to change things, then you can just click on that and then change it to, let's say, 10, 10 name and click Save. And that will be your automation. So every Wednesday at 9 a.m., 10 new prospects will be, will be starting a new campaign. It's not, not related to the follow-up. The follow-up carry on their own sequence, um, uh, irrespectively. But if you want new prospects to be on a, on, a, on a campaign, then that's one great way to do that. And then you can be as granular as you want. You can do Saturdays on Sunday. That's fine. It's just follow-ups that aren't sent on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and I think that will be it for now. We can see the events. Uh, we can see that Lera opened their email once, uh, didn't click on any of the links because we didn't add any click, any links actually in the copy. Do we have any questions so far or shall we just move on?
Done, Girish. Oh, Dan just, just had an issue. No questions so far for Hort. I'm good with Glenn. Tobin, no questions. Okay, so let's just move on, guys. So this is a sort of basic setup. You can get that done in five minutes if you have your list of prospects. Yeah, you have a question for later. Awesome, keep it. Um, and let's just move on into the next, um, next things, which is one of the obvious mistakes I see. So this is, this is the sort of next, uh, next step I want to talk about is all the easy mistakes that you can avoid um, when you're using QuickMail. And mostly this is, uh, this is copywriting uh, issues I, I can see uh, constantly. So some people will try to use QuickMail uh, like a mailing list, like MailChimp, to reach out to cold prospects. The problem with that is uh, it just doesn't work. So people try to build like pretty HTML and things like that. But if you have to keep in mind that it's a personal conversation just automated, it just doesn't make sense to you know build up a whole HTML thing to actually send to someone particularly. So um, people having bad um, bad reply rate are usually people using QuickMail as a mailing list where they're not really expecting an answer, they're just expecting to blast their message. There is better tool than that. Uh, you can use things like SendGrid, um, but don't, I wouldn't use QuickMail for that. Um, so if you want to really use your Gmail account, I will use something like MailMerge and then use it. Of course, you won't have the follow-ups, but that's one of the things you could do. So some of the things I can see is people saying like forget online marketing. So they're really straight away trying to to build up some um, um, some newsletter type of thing. And so that one forget online marketing. That campaign had a 2.34 percent reply rate. So let's say 2.3. And who prints your shirt for a company? So that guy tried to personalize with company the title but had like a 2.7% response rate. So again, stay away from HTML with big images and, and sort of nice thing. It may be nice visually, but that's not the thing you would send to a friend. Um, second mistake, being too salesy. So um, here's version A, version A saying invitation to something that could be, um, I don't know, let's say art, art painting workshop at um, New York. Uh, not very surprising, uh, got a 1.4% reply rate. Um, Gerish, we have a question, no sorry, Glenda, we have a question, what is the good, a good response rate? Great question, so a good response rate, I'm going to answer it differently, a bad response rate uh, is anything below 10%. A no care response rate is really um, 20 to 30 percent. Anything under 20 is not doing great. Um, so bad, less than 10, not great, between 10 and 20. 20 to 30, good, and above 30, really good. So you should aim for 25 percent as a minimum. And it's very achievable. Look at the next one. The next one says, hey, you like this. And then again, like art painting workshop coming to a city near you. This one had a 21% percent rate, uh, percent, um, resp response. But the second one had three touches. So it's like 7% on each touch, which is still actually pretty low. And the first one has only one touch, which really explains why it's so bad. And by one touch, I mean no follow-up. One of the biggest reasons why people don't get good, good, um, uh, uh, good response rate is because people don't build a relevant list. And this is the best way to get great responses. You can have a copy that is just okay, but if your list is resonating with what you're, what you're telling, then you have a much better chances of, of having a high response rate. So do pay attention, a lot of attention to what your um, what list your or, or, or how you can segment your list so that they are really interested in your campaign. Uh, another thing I see very often is things being too vague, fuzzy, uh, bits. It, whether it's in a proposition um, value, maybe the value proposition isn't clear. Uh, people just don't understand what you do or what you propose. 
or how they could benefit. So they just don't answer in the end. Um, Garish, for B2B company, would I recommend to email two people at the same company at the same time? You mean at the same company, I presume? Yeah, so basically, yes, you can do that with QuickMail. You can even reference, refer other people from the other company. Um, and to be honest, you just get more chances of response. So yes, I do recommend that if you can do that. Um, yeah, so the other thing that makes it confusing, uh, conf um, that fails with confusion is the call to action is unclear. So it's things like, let me know when you have a moment rather than actually, you know, hit reply and respond to me right now kind of thing. So people that are not really convinced in their call to action will try to be fuzzy and turn around things. How is the ebook on call email copywriting, the black art of call email? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Dan. I really need to kick my ass and then do it. But you guys kind of see a sort of preview of all the things that we're talking to. I will talk uh, more things in, but that's some of the things I will talk about. Uh, too many links. Uh, that's something that is, could be surprising, but basically it will affect drastically your deliverability thing. So I would say one link, no more, and put it at the bottom so that you know that if people click on link, they read your whole email and they're interested. So that's a good thing to judge how your, how your campaign is performing. All right, so we've seen the mistakes. Let's see the best practices I've seen. And those are backed up by facts. So that's not something like, hey, I, I looked at something that really worked. Uh, therefore, that's what you should do. I will look at things that work, but also at things that didn't work to make sure that one thing that worked is actually not it's actually something that really makes it work. So a great example of the survival bias is, um, I think it was during a, during a, a world war, um, planes were coming back, uh, bombers uh, planes, they were coming back and not all were coming back. And people were just looking at the one that came back with all the holes um, at certain parts uh, and then we're just saying, hey, let's, let's add more reinforcement to those places. And then it works, or it's, it's understandable, if you don't take into account the people, the, the flight that actually failed. So if you take them into account, then clearly the one taking bullets and coming back home safe, it means it's okay. It's the places where there is no bullet that needs to be reinforced. And it's a bit the same thing. I see constantly people recommending best email practices, but they recommend it on things that work without necessarily looking at things that don't work. So I have a great advantage of being able to see everyone's copy, so I can really go in and then tell you that worked, that didn't work, and this is why. So without further ado, let me just go on to one of the first best practices. The subject, should you personalize it or not? Does anyone have an as an idea or an opinion about this one, what do you guys think? If you can put it into the chat, it's like a small, quick, quick quiz. Definitely personalized. Definitely, definitely, definitely. The thing for is there is no pattern. So the funny thing is you'll see really good response rates having personalized thing, and one of the simple one is first question, uh, first name, strange question. But I got, I got um, a first name, strange question, with 48% response rate, but I also got some with 1.8% response rate. Yes, exactly. So Hannah said personalize the first line, not necessarily the open greeting. Yes, so one thing that is much more powerful uh, is to establish um, uh, likeness. We are going to see that. But that's one of the things I wanted to highlight is your, your subject line is actually not as important as one people may think. Uh, what's more important is what prospect you're contacting and what's your content. So let me just see uh, a few things. So on the content, so I'm going to look at the body now, there's a few things that you have to sort of look at. The first one is to create a relationship. Remember, this is not a one to many you're trying to to um, look at, you, you want things coming from your personalizing box so that the person feel personally 
you know, uh, talk to. And having their name into the email subject, how many times do you actually email a friend and say, hi, Glenda, you know, um, strange question for you. No, you just say, hey, strange question for you. Hi, Glenda, how are you doing? So that will be the sort of approach. Create look, um, try to reach for low commitments. So response rates are really higher when people will make it clear what it is or, and, and basically make it to low commitment. So if someone, that's typical where the appropriate person works. It's like, if you say, hey, who is the person in charge of X? It's very simple for me to just hit reply and say, hey, talk to, to Glenn or talk to John or whatever. It's a low commitment buyer and that's where it works really, really well. Another thing that works well is to tell what people should do. So things like, hey, reply yes now and then we can see the details later is actually a pretty powerful thing because the guy may be in the middle of doing something or, or, the, guy, or the girl for what that matters. She may be in the middle of doing something and you know, hitting, hitting the reply rather than just saying yes is a simple commitment. So you get more responsive that way. Of course, you need to follow up behind it. And one of my favorite things is obviously to offer value. And that goes sort of uh, in the opposite direction of the sort of salesy thing, where you're trying to push things to the throat. Here you're actually offering value and you say, hey, you know what? If you're really interested in X, Y, Z, then how about doing that? And you basically build up a relationship. That's one way. One other thing I want to spend a bit more time on, I think it's really undervalued, is the ability of uh, sending something um, that people think uh, you share something with someone. It's a bit like, you know, you get someone in the street, a total stranger in the street, and then you go on into, you know, talking with them about five minutes about something. So first thing is, your time is really limited, so make it short. And, and then highlight the point where you guys are similar so they'll be more inclined to help you out. You know, we tend to help the people that are like us. So, for example, if you're working in video games, then you say, hey, I'm a video game developer, or hey, I have, these, uh, I have a degree in video games, or those sort of things. That creates a connection right there and then because not everyone in the world can say, you know, they're also having a degree in developer in, uh, in, uh, in video games. Plus, the person may remember oh, that's what I was doing, I have to help that person because, you know, people helped me or people didn't help me when I was in, this, in, in that position. So here's one thing that worked pretty well. Uh, consider this copy, it made 22.86% response rate on the first email and then an additional 15.24% rate on the first follow-up. The total response rate of this was 51.4%. So that's right, that's amazing. So if I send, if I contact two people, one of the two people will respond to me. And it's done in a very simple way. So, um, hey, I'm a student in an executive entrepreneurship program. So, so far it's not so like, uh, it's not the same. And I'm researching typical challenges of profession, um, blah, blah. And having a, and then that's a degree coming in. I'm passionate about helping and then the profession again. Dan has a question. So if I have a sequence with three emails providing value, no offer on the next email with the offer and the client reply to the first three, the automation sequence stop. Yes, that's correct. Can I cancel per email? The sequence stopping feature. No, you stop a person uh, in their sequence. I'm just going to jump quickly because I think that's an interesting question. Here, what would happen is you will have to click on one person, go to the campaign and then click cancel. So I, I, I do it and then I cancel. From that point on, they won't receive any new email. But in the future, you can resume and say, actually, I want this email to resume on the 1st of January. Off we go. I resume it. And in about 21 days, they will receive the follow-up. That's quite useful when people are out of office, for example. But anyway, I diverge. So we were talking about likability or likeness. Um, ooh, I missed the one in the email. Oh, anyway. Best practices on waiting days. How many days should I wait between follow-ups? One, two, three, five. So what I figured out, uh, what I looked at from people where copy worked and from people where copy didn't work is the one spending too long before the next follow-up 
are the ones getting less responses. So one of the best consistent performers on quick mail is someone that has one a business day for the follow-up. And he's pretty clever. I say, hey, this is the email I sent you just yesterday. Oops, sorry about that. I wanted to highlight things. Let me try this new awesome feature of highlighting things. So this is the killer, I think, because it means like, he introduced a doubt as to, is it really an automated email kind of thing? And I think that's one of the things that helped that person getting a lot of responses. And the, and the, and the follow-up doesn't have to be like a big one. It has to be, uh, the best responses are like super short. Things like, hey, just check it in. We'd really love to get an answer when you have a moment. So, um, once the first follow-up is one day, you can put the other one to two days and three days and things like that. Um, it depends how confident you are, basically, in your, in your uh, value proposition and how, how fast you want things to move. It may also depend on your market as well. All right, here is my big practice on like an S. Sorry, I, I, I switched these slides by mistake. All right, so in, in subject, you can also use the likeness, and that's also a very powerful thing. So, Hey, quick question from fellow, and then you give. So quick question from fellow video game developer. That's pretty cool. I want to open that. You know, it means like another guy like me or another girl like me is actually interested in talking to me. That's pretty cool. I like to network with people in my, in my, um, in my um, industry. So the first one got 40%, 40% reply rate on the first touch. And then the second touch, was 21% more, and the third one, almost 10%. The total response rate of this um, copy was 73.4%, and the open rate was 80%. I mean, I can't even get my family to respond at 73%. So, really well done. Um, equally, <laughs> yeah, I got a comment like I, I will be sending emails to all industries. Well, you can still you can still try to figure out uh, how can I use that subject line. You can still try to figure out things that are in common. You don't have to use likability or likeness. There's a lot of of campaign that perform really really well without doing that. I just think it's a really powerful way of doing it. Um, but equally, your your um, your subject line should also be in line in what you propose inside. So, for example, I have one that says, follow welder fabricator. It's like, okay, that's kind of ambiguous. Are you talking to welder fabricator or are you talking to people like me, a welder fabricator? So, it's got a high open rate, but the problem is only got like 2.8 response rate because inside it doesn't deliver on the promises. It's not talking about like, hey, I want to reach out with you. Um, I want to increase my network and I want you to benefit from it. So you have to be conscious as to, you know, your email is, your subject is one thing, but it has to be in line with what your content is. Uh, I keep discovering awesome usage. Uh, things are like, uh, I, I saw one, uh, one person in QuickMail using it as um, uh, contacting companies for CV sending. So that was pretty unusual. And one thing that seems to be performing pretty well is things rooted in real events, such as, hey, how was your Thanksgiving last week? Those sort of things. Because traditionally, they've been really hard to put as campaign, but that's not the case anymore with QuickMail. You can very easily clone a campaign, change the title or change some, some content, and then run it again. So I'm going to show you how to do that, actually, uh, in the advanced practice. Sushi say we got 70% uh, on our first campaign with quick mail, 20% on the first email, 40% on follow-up, and 5% on the third follow-up. Awesome. Really awesome. I probably didn't look at you, and I probably will just after the, uh, this webinar. Okay. So, um, you more, I say yes, but you have to be careful with it. Uh, it. It helps with lightening the mood. I mean, I joke with friends, right? That's what we do. We, we do joke with friends. And 
you you're not trying you're trying to get intimate with that person so you're trying to go from cold prospect to warm prospect so one other thing that works well you know is to establish a relationship and I, jokes or humor is is a good way of doing it if your humor is pretty good so um, there's one that worked well it's called the alligator one and it says like I've attended to reach out to you but had no success. Either you've been eaten by a gator or you're just plain swamp. And then you have like a series of uh, choices that they can just tick. Uh, things like, um, uh, I wasn't eaten by an alligator, but you may wish I was. Or, uh, yes, I was. Please send sour or flowers. Or, no, sorry. Um, I wasn't, didn't have time to answer you. I still want to do it kind of thing. So it can work pretty well, especially as a sort of light uh, last resort kind of thing as well. All right, advanced tactics. So, pretty cool. Let's see the um, the thing I was saying about the news. So, how would I do that? So, I will go into my quick mail sequence um, campaign. Sorry, I click on campaign here. I have my New York competition, and inside, I think I said some time. Let me just click on first touch. Um, I didn't say any time, but let's say, for example, I said uh, 2014 or December 2014. One thing I can do is click on clone campaign. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on clone campaign. And here is my campaign copy. I'm going to say 2015 January. I'm going to save this one. And I'm going to change this one to be 2014 December. And now what I can do is I can go into my sequence and then change the copy for it. So I could say something in um, this one is uh, January 2015. And that's pretty much all I can change. Then one thing I can do is I can go to automation and change here the campaign. So I just click here and I put the 2015 one. And the color is pretty useful to figure out, like, oh, I forgot this one, or oh, it changed pretty well. And voila. If you wanted to have uh, two different, if you wanted to do A-B testing, for example, for the 2015 one, again, you'll probably use the same tactics. You'll go to the campaign button. You, you click on your New York competition January. You click clone. And then here I have, let's say, version A. And here I have version B. I want to do this one in a olive. And I click Save on those ones. Now, if I go to automation, I can add, I can use, instead of using this A, I can use the B one. And you can do that for multiple days. So you can say, again, on Friday at uh, 10 a.m., You want to take um, 10 from New York blog and you want to run version, version A for Friday. And that Friday day, you will have the version A and the version B. And I can click here and say, actually, I just want five here. So that's one way you can do. So that's for the um, A-B testing. Now let me see which one I'm talking about. So A-B testing we talked about. New thread we can talk about. Uh, new thread is basically the ability to start a sort of new email. So as we've seen um, with the previous campaign, uh, the previous email is included. So I'll go back to campaign here. And what I want to do is I want to build up a sort of um, relationship that is based on multiple weeks, let's say. So I'll go to sequence here. And you can see those blocks of email that are together, which means when you send the second touch, the first touch is also added. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new email, but this time I'm going to start a new thread, and I'm going to change the email. I'm going to add something here. What about you yesterday? I'm going to show them an article that could be interesting, put maybe two days reminder, and voila. When they will receive this email, they won't include those ones. So it's like a completely new email. And you can do that with as many. You can do... Uh, you can leave this one and say um, quick follow-up. So this is your quick follow-up. 
and you can see now that those blocks are together. So when I send the fourth touch, the third touch is included. And you can go on like that, create new threads and things like that. And that's pretty useful for building uh, long-term sort of relationship or for people who are hard to contact, basically. Um, okay, what about if I wanted to personalize thing? Um, I think um, Girish was saying, was talking about having multiple uh, industry. Well, let's try that. Let's say my San Francisco blogs are about different industries. So what I do here is I create a new column on the right, and I'm going to call it industry. So far, if you remember what I said about financial, this won't be imported into quick mail. So we'll need to let quick mail know it's okay to import this column. Bear in mind this is advanced features again. So I go to prospect here, I go to custom attributes, and I create one called industry. There we go. And I'm going to create another one called intro as well. And I'm going to go into my spreadsheet and also create um, and one called a field, uh, a column called intro. From now on, everything I put into it will be imported directly into QuickMail. No problem, Hannah. I will actually send a, um, I will actually send a recording. Thanks for popping in. Really appreciate. I'll try to, I'll try to accelerate quickly for people still, still here because we're pretty close to the end. So here is basically how you can um, you can customize each invite on a sort of um, broader scale. In my campaign, I will I will create here. I won't actually touch it because I've been sending emails already. I can see that by going to the funnel and see that my prospects are currently on the first touch. No one responded. The response are on the right side, and where people are at is on the left side. So I can see at the moment I got five prospects on the first touch. So what I want to do is to do another clone, and I'm going to say personalized for this one. And the personalized one, I'm going to edit it. I want to do a few things. In the first touch, I will edit. I want to have something called intro here. So I do curly brackets twice, and I put intro. If you click on show, you can see suddenly your custom attributes are also shown here, so it's easy to refer to. So here you could say, um, here you can talk about the, the industry. You could say, I love your, your blog about industry. And as intro, so I'm going to say that, Notice that it's been correctly done, so I've got industry in green, intro in green, which means custom fields. Uh, and then what I can do is, in the intro, I'm going to take the next one, Sherman. In the intro, what I can say is saying, um, I um, loved your latest article, for example. If I spell it right. And then you can have a VA doing that. And then here you can have industry. So I don't know, steel, whatever. And you save that. And you can, I can actually show you how it works. If I click view here, click on campaign, and then try this with a personalized version, I can see things doing, you know, will be done here. And I can send myself a testimony to verify again everything's working fine. But you can see, love your latest article, and then hear your blog about steel. All right, I think we covered all the advanced features. And the next slide is about Q&A. So, Garish, I think you had a question. Do you want to, to ask it? Uh, if you have a microphone, I'm happy to, um, to let you speak. Um, Felix is asking a question. Oh, that's weird, Felix. You're not in the chat room. You should be in the chat room with us. Um, so quickmail.io slash chat. Uh, so Felix is asking, what if there is no uh, intro in the line? Uh, we have an empty space at the top. That's correct. It will replace it with nothing. So, but in my experience, it works pretty well. I got that uh, copy in my stuff. And if you do 
hi someone, if you do hi this and then leave a space here, most of the um, most of the mail reader will actually skip the space because there is nothing in that. So that will be, you know, hey Shaman, I'm Jeremy Founder. So it's a nice thing, I actually add that to all my copy, so it's a nice optional thing for me to do. Okay, other questions. Hey, bye Torben, I hope you had all the answer you were looking for. Port, um, is there an easy way to identify a prospect who didn't respond to put them into a different group? Uh, perhaps I want to reach out to them in 90 days. So one thing I do, Hot, is I do that with all my campaign. I go to my campaign here, and in my last email, in the sequence, in my last touch, I edit that, and I put it to something like 20 days, which is a business day, so it's a month's time. So I save that, and if you go, it will take 20 days for them to go cold. So before those 20 days happen, you can still add more touch. So here's a fifth touch. It's, I want it to be a new email. I say, hey, long time, no talk. Right? And this is another email. And that way I will sort of build a very long pipeline of uh, cold reaching out. And after 20 days, it will send a completely brand new email, and after three days, it will go cold. So again, I probably like finish my, my sort of follow-ups here, and then add like a long day here. And if that's not the case already, uh, then that becomes more problematic. You probably want to resume them. So you'll go to prospects, sorry, I double click. And then you'll figure out uh, the campaign they're running, and then you want to select the people who are called, of course they won't be called, then you select them, and then here you don't have yet resume follow-ups, but that's something I will do for people that are called. So that'd be a nice thing to do, like you'll be able to just say wake them up, for example. Hey Felix, yeah I'm sorry, I tried to put it on all the slides here, the chat link, but uh, for some people, people, not everyone, just go for that link. Hey, Dustin, thanks for joining in. I'm not sure if you've been listening for a long time, but if you have any question, then now is the time. Hot, I hope it answered your question. Sushi wants to see the Zapier integration screen. How that interface with QuickMail? Great question. So I mentioned Zapier. Um, let me see what we got. So for going to Zapier integration, you need the Pro account, but then once you got, you can click on Settings, click on Pro account, and then here we explain you how to basically do things. Uh, so you need to generate a key. Let me just show you if, if nothing was happening. So you come here, you need to generate a key, and then you need to click here to enable Zapier, uh, enable Quick Mail in Zapier. So I click here, and that will bring me to an invitation. I have to accept an invite, and that will send me to the dashboard. Now in the dashboard, I already accepted and so on, you got plenty of different zaps you can do. So for example, this is one zap I did with Pipedrive. Oh, do you, what, what you guys are using for um, CRM? I'd be curious. We got Salesforce. Well, Salesforce is great for Zapier. You've got plenty of different, oops, sorry. Salesforce has a great integration on Zapier. I'm really happy with that. Uh, they got, uh, you can create a new note when someone responds. You can create case, create an account. Uh, you can even do the BCC, actually. Uh, let me just do that quickly because some of my users do that. In the settings, on general, you can use, um, BCC here to all email, and some people use their Salesforce account. Uh, back to Zapier. Uh, for people who don't want to have, yeah, a lot of people are doing Pipedrive. It's crazy. So let me just go to Pipedrive. All right, so Pipedrive, unfortunately, has not the greatest integration in Zapier. Um, a few... Um, a few CRM just, you know, pretend they're on Zapier by just, you know, adding just a few things, but sometimes it's not good enough. Anyway, 
So let me uh, do things here. So this is that, the pipe drive things. I'm going to create a person when people either open their email, clink, or uh, re um, respond to an email. Another thing I want to add is when people change state. So when they go cold, for example, will be a useful thing to either put into pipe drive or things to sort of remember. And so let's say I want um, email replied. So I go select my QuickMail account, select my pipe drive account, select the filter if I wanted a filter. Like for example, I want it to be the first reply. So um, I only want it. I don't want it like if it's the second time that person responds. So I want it only on the first time. So here we go. First reply uh, is one of the fields here. Uh, where is my first reply? Here. This is one of the fields. It will be true only when this is the first reply for, uh, for a prospect. But you can also use all your custom attributes. So here we can see intro uh, attributes and other attributes. Pretty much the same as when you imported things from your uh, spreadsheet. Same thing. Uh, and then here you can go ahead and then, you know, um, add things. That's basically how it works. I need to save my pipe drive account. There you go. And then here you can select things. So here's me, the owner. And here's a person. I can insert for the person name, I want the first name, space, last name, for example. Email is pretty simple. You want the email. Um, and so on. You can also do the reply email. If some people respond, like I say, the, they send, you send an email to their personal address and they respond from a professional address, for example. So the reply email will be the one they respond from. So that could be useful too for some people. All right. Um, any other questions? Or we move into the bonus uh, thing for this uh, webinar. Okay, seems like it's all good. So what I do now is I stop the recording and I'm going to show you the bonuses that uh, I can provide. <laughs> I hope this is too busy setting pie drive. <laughs>